my name is Stephen Lang. I'm the keeper of the Asian section here at the Penn Museum. Behind me is a Japanese Buddhist painting that was made in the 16th or 17th century. This painting is based on the teachings of the Maha Prajnaparamitra Sutra, or as it is known in English, the Greater Sutra of the Perfection of Wisdom. It is a very important sutra in Buddhism because it talks about the illusionary nature of existence, which is a core concept of Buddhism. The painting depicts the Shakyamuni Buddha seated on a throne in the middle with his hands in the Abhaya Mudra. Mudras are symbolic gestures that represent different ideas. This mudra in particular stands for protection and dispelling fear. The Buddha is actually surrounded by 16 deities who serve as protectors of the Buddhist law as well as Buddhist practitioners. There is a long history in Buddhist painting of portraying monks. However, this painting is particularly interesting because of the presence of the monk Duanzong. Duanzong was a Buddhist monk who lived from approximately 600 to 660 CE during the Sui and Tang dynasties. Duanzong felt that many of the Buddhist texts that were available in China at the time weren't really up to snuff and were extremely confusing. He really wanted to go back to India to read the original texts and understand their original intended meanings. He also wanted to collect as many texts as he could from India, bring them back to China, and translate them into Chinese so that contemporary Chinese Buddhist scholars could also read them. Drenzong traveled 10,000 miles along the Silk Road, taking 16 years to travel from China to India and back. His travel records are among the first accounts that we have of various important Buddhist sites, such as Turfan, Kucha, Samarkand, and Bamiyan along the Silk Road. These records give us a glimpse into the different Buddhist communities along the Silk Road in the 7th century. When we see Drenzong depicted in paintings, he is often carrying a large backpack full of scrolls. These scrolls represent only a fraction of the sutras he would have brought back from India. What is curious is the use of rolled scrolls to represent Indian Buddhist texts. The actual text would have almost certainly been flat, palm-leaf manuscripts with Sanskrit characters inscribed into the leaves. These leaves would then be rubbed with a dark powder making the inscribed text visible. This was a very different technique from writing with a brush and ink on paper. So why does Duanzong appear with the scrolls instead of flat, palm-leaf manuscripts? There were actually many itinerant monks who traveled along the Silk Road. Some of the monks used picture scrolls to spread Buddhism and tell stories about the life of the Buddha. In order to carry these texts along the Silk Road, the monks wore large backpacks, similar to the one worn by Duanzong in the painting, so they could transport them from city to city. Depictions of these monks can be found in cave paintings throughout Central Asia. It is possible that at some point an artist mistakenly mapped the image of these itinerant monks, with their numerous picture scrolls, onto Duanzong. With so much cultural interaction along the various routes, it makes sense that something might have gotten lost in the translation. This is just one example of what makes the art of the Silk Road so complex and interesting. The fact that Central Asian cave painting directly influenced the iconography of a Chinese monk in a Japanese painting speaks to the role that the Silk Road had in Buddhist art throughout the centuries. Duanzong's legacy is very far-reaching. He is responsible for bringing many texts from India into China and translating them into Chinese. He is very instrumental in bringing many ideas to East Asian Buddhism that take hold and flourish in Japan. Drenzong also inspired many 20th century explorers like Arl Stein to research and retrace his steps across Central Asia. Thanks to Drenzong's written accounts, explorers and scholars have been able to revisit the important sites along the Silk Road and discover much of the history that informs this exhibition. In this way, Drenzong is one of the most important people to think about when talking about the Silk Road.